Reflections, a transformation recap, Grade C, GCSE Level 7, National Curriculum. Now, in essence, reflection, just a simple reflection, is not a Grade C topic or Level 7, but it can get to that level when you're doing it in either describing transformations or you're doing multiple transformations. So that's why I put it in as a Level 7 topic. To start with, reflections on coordinate grids are all about lines equations of lines. You need to know the equations of lines, um, the basic lines, so that you can describe a reflection or if you're asked to do a reflection in a particular line you know which one you're talking about. So we have, I've got four types of lines, well three types of lines here, this one's just the reverse of this one. We've got vertical lines, so the vertical line is our x equals something line. Now the, the something it equals depends on what the line goes through. This goes through the number four that's x equals 4. If the line went through the number minus 6, that would be x equals minus 6. Horizontal lines, because on horizontal lines all the y coordinates stay the same, these are y equal lines. So this one is going through the number 5, just like the x, as x equals 4, this is y equals 5. And again, if I move that around, up and down, it's just whatever number it goes through, that's the uh, y equals that number. Now, two special lines that are always worth a mention are the x-axis, which is the line that goes along the x-axis which you put the numbers on, and that line is actually the y equals zero line, because it goes through where y equals zero and it's a horizontal line. So those two things are the same, the x-axis and the y equals zero line. A little bit confusing because this is x and this is y, but that's just the way it is. And the same for the y-axis, the vertical line that goes through 0 is x equals 0. So the y-axis is x equals 0. And the other two main lines that are used are the diagonal, the main diagonal. So you've got the y equals x where all the y-coordinates are the same as the x-coordinates along the line. And the one going in the opposite direction is the y equals minus x line. This could be called x equals y, and this could be called x equals minus y, but we tend to put the y on the left-hand side if we have it have x's and y's. So those are the lines you need to be aware of when doing reflections. Now, a diagonal reflection is the one that causes most problems. Vertical and horizontal you shouldn't really have an issue with, if you're careful. Um, but let's have a look at a diagonal reflection. Now, the proper way of doing this is to draw construction lines. So if you draw lines that are at right angles, so if this is coming down the main diagonal, this is going to be going in the opposite diagonal. So going through the corners of the squares, keeping it very accurate. Go through the corner of the squares and just draw some construction lines on, which are just lines that go through your line of symmetry at right angles, um, all the way to the other side. Try to make sure they're going through the corners of the squares. Oops. Let's just undo that. And then you should be able to place your points of reflection onto there. So if we start from this one, now any transformation is really just transforming the points of the corners of the shape and then you just join those up to make the lines, to make the outline of the shape. So if we start with this vertex, we're moving it one and a half. So we count a half and one. To this point. This one is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Now you could measure this with a ruler, but as you've got a coordinate grid, it's just as easy to count the squares or the diagonals. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. Half, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1 and a half, half and 1. So that'd be there. And then we can join that up with a ruler or straight line. So there's our shape. Oh, we're using lines with arrows, it doesn't really do that, but it doesn't matter. So there's our reflection. Leave the construction lines on, everything there to show that you know what you're doing. Now, to help people that are not good at that sort of thing, um, you can ask for a piece of tracing paper in a GCSE exam, and you should be provided with one. If you then trace the sh around the shape, let me just move that out of the way again, I haven't finished explaining. If you trace around the shape and mark on a point 
on the line of reflection where you're going to line up your tracing and mark that on your tracing as well flip your piece of tracing paper over so it looks something like this and then you can place it on top of your drawing and mark, line up the line of reflection line up the mark you made in on the line of reflection and then you have your drawn outline which you can then retrace lift off and uh, draw on properly with a ruler and you'll have the same answer okay one thing left to do describing a reflection now it may seem silly but the main thing you need to say when describing a reflection is the word reflection now when you're describing a transformation you obviously won't know which one it is it could be reflection rotation um, and uh, translation obviously it's obvious if something's been enlarged but uh, the two things you need for a reflection and the reflections are only ever worth one, two marks one for the word reflection and one for the line of reflection okay so the equation of the line so one of these equations will describe the line of reflection quite often you can get away with putting the y-axis or the x-axis if that's what it is but for the ones that aren't you'll have to use the proper equations y equals x equals and maybe one of the diagonal lines so that's reflections recap for transformations